Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received Al Sakhir Palace, the supreme authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, headed by His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Majesty directed to develop the march of the Rashid Equestrian Club to reach higher levels of organization and provide the best ways to prepare for the next season. His Majesty the King hailed the efforts of the President, the members of the Supreme Authority, the attendees and all officials in the club in supporting this authentic Arab sport. His Majesty commended the achievements of the club since its establishment, which promoted the kingdom on the international sports map and encouraged Bahraini youth to practice equestrian sports. He also highlighted the achievements of the late Sharaf Al Alawi and affirmed his continued support to the sport to contribute to its advancement locally and internationally, wishing them further success. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah briefed His Majesty on the club's activities and future programs, expressing thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for supporting the club and the equestrian sport. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today the Ambassador of Kuwait to Bahrain Sheikh Azam Barak Al Sabah who greeted His Royal Highness the Premier marking the end of his diplomatic term. His Royal Highness held the deep-rooted Bahraini-Kuwaiti fraternal ties praising the supportive stances of the Emir of Kuwait His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah towards Bahrain in all circumstances. His Royal Highness the Premier expressed deep gratitude and appreciation to Ambassador Sheikh Azam's efforts throughout his term in the Kingdom to consolidate cooperation between the two countries. He hailed the Ambassador's expertise and efficiency, wishing him success. The Ambassador expressed deep gratitude and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Premier for his patronage and diligence in boosting the two countries' fraternal ties, commending the Premier and the Bahraini government for the support that contributed to his successful mission. Sheikh Azam recalled His Royal Highness's visit to Kuwait and communication with Kuwait's leadership that consolidated the legacy of the fathers and forefathers, noting that his diplomatic term in the kingdom would forever remain vivid in his memory. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the President of the National Guard, General Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited Riyadh yesterday, where they conveyed the condolences of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the Emir of Riyadh, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bandar bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and their Royal Highnesses, his siblings, on the demise of His Royal Highness Prince Bandar bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness Prince Faisal expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his kind sentiments, which reflect the deep rooted and brotherly relations between the two countries. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosts today an important international military meeting that will focus on the current developments in the region. The meeting will discuss means to enhance international cooperation and coordination in order to combat the rejected and repeated hostile practices of Iran and its terrorist affiliates, which aim to undermine the security of maritime navigation in the Arabian Gulf and the Strait of Hermas, constituting a threat to the stability of the region and the world at large. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, stated that hosting such meetings affirms that Bahrain continues to play a pivotal role in strengthening joint action with the countries of the GCC and its international allies and partners in order to secure trade and energy passages, grant international navigation freedom, and reinforce peace and security in this vital and strategic region. In light of the recent challenges and threats facing the region, the minister stressed the importance of regional and international cooperation, calling upon the international community to assume its role in deterring all threats that target international security and peace. 
The Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs held its periodic meeting chaired by the Minister of Education and Deputy President of the Committee, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi. In the presence of ministers and committee members, the committee reviewed the topics and memorandums on its agenda, which included a number of draft laws and resolutions that the committee had studied upon the request of the government. The committee also reviewed a number of draft laws prepared upon the proposal submitted by the Legislative Authority following the preparation of the legal drafting of the laws. The committee also studied a number of proposals submitted to, to the government by their representatives' council. The Information and E-Government Authority, the IGA, presented an overview of an advanced endpoint protection solution at the fourth CyberHawks meeting. IGA Vice Chief Executive for Operations and Governance, Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa said, that the meeting is in response to directives by the Supreme Committee for Information and Communication Technology, the SCICT, chaired by Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. The aim is to institute the use of modern technologies in addressing potential cybersecurity threats. He explained that the meeting is part of IGA's plan to implement robust standards that will enhance the level of security in the government network by addressing the increasing levels of cyber threats faced by the Kingdom, adding that IGA constantly seeks to further enhance the security levels of the government's IT infrastructure. The meeting reviewed the framework for the Advanced Protection System Plan for adoption by the government and its implementation plan, as well as the requirements and needs of different government entities. This workshop basically it's focusing on the, uh, the endpoint of protection on all the, uh, the workstations, the systems, and application in the government of Bahrain. Um, this is, I think that it's a very um, a high level uh, uh, workshop, which is basically guiding the government entities to push this new application and a new system in their entities. And I think that this is a good opportunity for the government entities to go with this Palo Alto application. A delegation from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Food and Drug Authority, headed by its president, Dr. Hisham bin Saad Al Jadai, visited the headquarters of the National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, within the framework of the cooperation and coordination between the two friendly countries in the pharmaceutical and medical devices sector. The National Health Regulatory Authority's Chief Executive Officer, Mariam Al Jalahma, welcomed the President of the Saudi Food and Drug Authority, where they visited the departments of NHRA and reviewed the services and programs it provides in all fields. During the visit, they also signed a cooperation agreement between the NHRA and the Saudi Food and Drug Authority in the field of medicine control and medical devices, which comes after the approval of the cabinets of both countries to exchange information on the results of laboratory tests on medicines and health products, the exchange of information regarding medicine and medical devices registered with the two parties, as well as in the field of joint inspection of factories. It also included the cooperation in the field of joint training and exchange of information on pharmaceutical warnings. We were ordered today to sign the Memorandum of Understanding between the uh, National Health Regulatory Authority in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Saudi Food and Drug uh, Authority. Uh, this Memorandum of Understanding will have benefit for both uh, countries uh, in terms of regulating uh, the medicines, uh, medical uh, devices, clinical trials and laboratory analysis as well. It's very important to gain experience from the Saudi FDA. They have a long back history in, uh, in regulating uh, medicines especially and medical devices. And we want to benefit uh, from both sides to also in the training and in um, uh, inspections also. So this will facilitate for investors to move their products between the countries. We are taking the uh, safety of patients seriously, very seriously on multiple level and on the level of regulator and also uh, level of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, health sectors and practitioner and also to the consumer uh, so uh, having this agreement uh, with uh, with the authority uh, our counterpart authority in in the kingdom of bahrain is very essential uh, in advancing the safety of, of public in terms of medication and 
also uh, medical devices. And, uh, and this is, will start from manufacturing, from approving of the products, from uh, importing of the products, and also utilization of that. Uh, so we both, we, are think, we think that this will enhance the safety of use of medication and medical de devices in both country, inshallah. So that's what, uh, why we, are, we think this uh, agreement with the Kingdom of Bahrain is essential, as we have uh, a lot of similarity in our si both system, and also similarity in our patients, in diseases, in, in other uh, a different habit. Uh, so we think this is will make it much uh, easier and more successful in, in, in working uh, together, inshallah.